What's up, Zox fam? Now, we're gonna be getting into the Next Fest demo for Sword of Convalaria. Now, I have to shout out the team for allowing me to have a little bit of an early access to it so I can give you guys my full thoughts and opinions of this demo and really why I am so excited for Sword of Convalaria pushing forward. Now, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it because this is an amazing opportunity for you guys to get a little bit deeper into the lore, really understanding what they're bringing to the table as far as mechanics and really how this game is going to be even even more fleshed out the more that you invest time into it so let's get into it all right so first things first i want to talk about some of the hub changes because this is the steam version of the game and this is absolutely beautiful with how they actually went and they zoomed everything out just a little bit so you have more of a scope of what your environment looks like i feel like this is actually a very very well done job even when we're looking at how the hub spacing is and considering that there is going to be later on because i have played this uh you will be able to add like furniture and things of that nature you'll be be able to see like the place in its glory and what you customize which is actually really really good right now of course with that i want to emphasize and talk about what the uh direction of this demo is about unlike previous playthroughs that i've done this demo is actually going to be focusing more on these spirals of destiny so the fool's journey is the main story for those of you guys that know and then the next reciprocating dungeon next to it is actually going to be the resource dungeon but we're not worried about those so let's actually head into the spiral of destinies now the spiral of destinies is going to be the game mode that does not require any stamina not at all okay it just has a key system which to be quite fair you actually do get quite a bit of keys um, and the thing is is that with this game mode it's going to be kind of expanding and allowing you to deep dive and engulf yourself in the lore while also being able to kind of build up the sword of convalaria the mercenary group so we're going to go ahead and hit continue here and kind of dive a little bit into some of these things now the first thing we're going to take a look at here is the quest the quest is going to be giving you an opportunity to take on different types of stages so you're going to have stages that are going to allow you to be able to fight just bandits and then you're going to have some stages with like actual objectives you're even going to have some that will allow you to go up against other mercenary groups and then there's even going to be things called critical battles which will allow you to make a pivotal decision or have a pivotal moment happen to allow you to actually see who you're going to unite with or who might unite with you and this will actually gateway us into the factions now with the factions what i really like with how they did this is that it actually will tell you where the factions stand how much uh influence do they have or reputation and what exactly is it going to take for you to gain their trust so if you're looking at the factions here you can see that on the screen the union is under neutral and they have a 150 reputation with a 300 impact but then you go and you look at the Velger tribes, they only have an impact of 100 with zero reputation. And when you kind of even look at like the whole entire concept, this is a tribe less located in the northeastern mountains and stays on the sideline towards the civil war of area. So they seem to be the faction that doesn't really get involved. Now, when you're looking at area and Papal states, you're going to see that they have a negative reputation with a 150 um, impact. And then you look at area who has a 20 reputation with a 400 impact and then you can kind of go and scroll down and reading some of the lore about what exactly is going on or what this region actually is standing for or faction i should say for better words so there is a lot that kind of goes into like like i said the actual understanding in the story component but i want you guys to actually be able to enjoy that for yourselves now if we go back we can actually take a look at the archive and anything that you've actually experienced in your encyclopedia, your journal, and your notes, you can always go back and re-experience this. Or if you forgot something, you can go back and read it so that you can actually see what exactly has happened. Now, if we go back even further, we're going to actually take a look at the town. Okay. Now, the town here is actually going to be very, very well versed. So you have Convalary Hill where you actually meet a lot of people um, that actually are very important conversations you need to have you also have the training grounds where you'll be able to train the characters specifically in this game mode so you can actually raise their levels teach them new skills and all of that jazz so let's actually go there so you can see it so let's see okay now if we click the training button here 
it's an empty slot but for whoever we want to train we can select a program for them either either exp skills we can tailor uh training hp enhancements and you'll be able to get these different uh things or drops from beating different stages to help you with your training and i would say kind of like think of them as like training scrolls or training modules to help you with bettering your characters now if we actually go back right and let's go all the way back to the town okay cool you also have the luxite workshop now this is going to be another important component to this as well where you'll be able to actually talk to barrel where barrel will allow you to do or i would say actually have an opportunity to do field research now with that it will take some time for you to actually be able to unlock some of these but as you unlock these you will be able to send off specific types of units to be able to gain the resources necessary to do research upgrades and then with the research upgrades you'll actually be able to unlock different components components that can help you with the actual fights that you're going to be tackling. So for example, we can unlock this to get a max TP of plus 20%. Or we can actually go for something that's going to allow us to increase our TP recovery per round in battles. So we're going to go ahead and unlock both. And then when you choose to, you can actually advance this to increase the levels of them. So this is, again, getting a little bit more into a town building component versus it just being purely a game mode that you just don't use stamina and just has story. It actually is layers to it. And what time you put in and how deep you get into it is actually going to determine what you'll be able to unlock within the game mode, which is really really cool to see now if we go back to the town again you also going to have the forge which is going to be a, a place where you'll be able to make gear and the thing that's really cool about here is you have a lot of different types of gear i have something crafting so unfortunately i can't get a little bit deeper into it but it's not that complicated so you can craft rare gear or you can craft like common gear there's a lot of different like resources you'll be collecting from battles but essentially this is going to be the gear that you'll be using in this specific game mode but keep in mind that you will be able to gain rewards or yield rewards that you can utilize in the other aspects of the game. So again, even though they have separate components or things that you can emphasize here, it doesn't take away from the main story and they allow what the time you put into this to actually give you resources and reap, I'll say, some sort of rewards for the main storyline, for example, or PVP, which is really, really cool. Now, Let's go back one more time to the town and you have your tavern, you have your haven, and you also have your town square as well as your sanctuary. These are things that you'll come across as you kind of like dabble a little bit more into the game mode, but this is essentially some of the components that really help make up this town building experience. So if we go back to the leader's office, let's actually get into some combat. And let's just do this easy one so you guys can kind of get an idea. I want to actually show you guys for the first time officially the uh, the uh, movement um, functionality that they added to this game mode. Because, again, that was one of the big things that people were having trouble with was the movement, right? If your character is behind a certain object, how am I going to be able to place them where I want? So the thing is, is that let's actually place our units here. All right. And because they zoomed out, it's actually a little bit easier to place our units the way we want. And let's go with uh, Matha and then let's hit start. All right, sweet. So now if we find ourselves in a position, so let's say hypothetically, there was something blocking Matha from being able to be placed properly because before you would have to try to click it and you could misclick and it would just be a really, really bad experience with trying to place your units. Now they have the move functionality where it actually gives you the units on your cruiser or your clicker and you can physically take them to wherever you want and place them. The way that this functionality works is that it's allowing us to still keep the graphic quality of the game and enjoy and experience that without having to sacrifice that by trying to add something to 3D turn um, the game. And again, if you have not seen the graphics and the animations of how units work in this game, you're missing out, dude. The it is definitely something that I'm glad they decided to actually keep because it is very, very well done. Now, of course, with that, we're just going to place Meta here and we're just going to look at some of the other components. So you have your tactics as well. So this is like kind of like a team or a uh, kind of like, uh, I would say, leader skill that you can utilize in combat. And then you also have the backtrack mode, which will allow you to be able to, for example, if you made a mistake and you could have made a better decision and someone dies, you can go back to the last character, last round 
round, next character, and or next round. And you have three times you can do that in each fight. So it is a very, very, very good, uh, I would say, like kind of uh, functionality. So kind of think of it as you get to walk back in time and redo a mistake you made, right? So that's really, really cool. Now, if we go back here, we have the auto mode as well, and we're gonna actually turn that on. Now, the auto mode, you can hit speed up, so it actually goes a little bit quicker, but I would say, guys, the most optimal gameplay is going to be manual, and I really would advise you, if you are doing objective-based uh, game modes, do um, manual, okay? And that's so that you can always make sure that you're actually completing the task at hand. So let's see here. I really like the flow of battle and how the units just kind of like just super seamless. Really, really well done. All right, here we go. So now we got to get rid of the leader and then we're good. So there we go. So in a nutshell, after you do a fight, each of the characters have their own energy or kind of think of it as stamina. So instead of you using like account energy like you would in the regular storyline, you are actually using energy of your characters. But don't fret, there is a functionality within the town that allows you to be able to restore this energy so you can continue to bring those units into either fights or send them out on dispatches, etc. right? Now, like I said before, you are going to have inventory so you can see all of your items and materials in here as well and then you're also going to have your characters that you'll be able to also see and this is going to be for this specific game mode so none of the characters here are bad in my opinion i feel like all of them are going to be usable because of the idea of how they made this and the cool thing is is that with the characters there are going to be higher rarities of even what is normally the, the common characters and you can recruit them in the tavern right so again very, very expansive game mode. Now, if we actually go back, um, and where are we going to go back? We're going to actually go back to the home screen because I actually want to get into one of the other functionalities. Now, that's basically going to be the Spiral of Destinies in a nutshell. Um, what I will say, though, is that there's more that might interest you that I actually found to be quite interesting. Now, if we take a look here and we go to, oh, wrong button. Let's actually go to our settings. There is going to be controller support, okay? So not only are you guys going to be able to play this game or enjoy this game with your mouse and keyboard, but you're also going to be able to play the game with controller support. So they have the general tab, so you can see the controls here, um, but then they also have in battle. So yes, you will be able to use controller in battle as well. So not only are you gonna be able to play this on mobile, PC with mouse and keyboard, but again, you will also be able to play this with controller support. So it's just a lot that they're actually putting in and kind of opens up the door to even potentially see this game crossing over into other consoles. I would really like to see this again with obviously the talk of the game going on Switch. I think that that's actually going to be a huge W for the game. And they really have set the game really, really nice in terms of how it's laid out. I'm actually really excited. Now, like I said too, guys, this beta or this demo, sorry, is not really emphasizing summoning or pulling for characters, but really experiencing the game, understanding and learning the mechanics. And like I said, I have to give the team a, a plus in what they've presented so far. So we're gonna end the video off with doing a couple of different pools here uh, to see if we can actually get something. We might not, we might, but I always feel like that's how I like to end my videos off. Um, and of course, always being able to see the animation is really cool as well. So let's see what we get here. So we got a common unit here and I actually really like how the interface looks now. Like it just looks way more conformed um, for just the average person to be able to enjoy. So let's see. Okay, so we got another common archer. Now, again, this is going to be wiped, so it's not like this really matters, but this is, again, for those of you guys who have never seen the animation, this is what it looks like. All right, let's see. Maybe maybe we might get lucky, you know? We might get a really OP, OP single pool. You never know. All right, let's see. All right, so we actually, we're not, we're not yet, not yet. I feel, I feel it though, I feel it. Now the other thing too, I don't really do it, but you can actually move this a lot and you can pull any of the tarot cards that you want, right? Oh, okay, we got an SR, nice. Ooh, it's Lash too. You know what? That's actually really, really cool. And it looks like they actually have changed it. So it's considered an epic uh, unit now. So that's actually really cool. All right, so let's see. All right, let's see. Maybe maybe that's how we get it. We get it to happen here. Okay, that's the second one. I think you got to rotate it. 
Oh, nice. Agile Eye is actually really fun to play. It's actually a really good unit. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's rotate this. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's do. Let's do this one. The Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Nice. That's okay. We got three in a row. Okay. Well, you know, I'll, I'll take these. I'll take these. We got might. Might. <laughs> All right. And I think we have that's it. Okay. Yeah. That's it, guys. So, yeah, guys, that's basically going to be that. Overall, I have, like I said, absolutely been enjoying it. I'm going to continue to push through on this. I am going to have some videos where we're going to be taking a look at some TW content. Like I said, um, again, guys, I appreciate you guys for being patient. And again, shout out to the staff and the development team for allowing me to uh, have the opportunity to be able to take a look at this and to be able to make this video um i will say that i've absolutely have been having a blast like i said um uh, and i really am appreciative of the opportunity but i hope you guys end up enjoying the demo on next fest let me know how you guys feel personally with everything that you're seeing down below all right so that's going to be that guys everyone stay blessed and i'll catch you guys in the next one